All right, you've mentioned quite a, quite, a, quite a few reasons why Africa is the way it is, but some, some, some writers and some uh, scholars have said that one of the major uh, problems Africa has is the leadership problem. In your opinion, sir, how do we reverse this trend? Firstly, the challenge with leadership in Africa, and that is actually a major reason for the backwardness of Africa. And part of the problem is, uh, if you go again back into my book, I, I argued that even the colonial masters, seeing that they have to leave, created a system that made us at fault from the beginning. They took tribes that were smaller and placed them on the bigger ones. And sometimes they took tribes that were not that educated and gave them the impression that they are the political masters. While the tribes that are educated were told that they are the technical or technocrats. So those who were told they are the political masters always felt it was their birthright to rule. And it's the same in Nigeria, in Ghana. It was the cause of the problem in Rwanda. To reverse this, Africa needs to realize that it needs to create institutions that raise leaders. Um, in our universities, for example, in Nigeria, we have what is called GNS, uh, the compulsory course in which you do every subject. They should have in it leadership training, leadership program, so that there is an evolution of young leaders coming up. We need to go to the root to why our leaders have failed. We need to also study what are the essential elements of successful leadership. In fact, right now I'm in the middle of researching and writing on leadership. I was so burdened that I began an MBA on leadership, although I had to stop it because of the work commitment. I'm in the middle of writing five books on leadership because particularly in Africa, the challenge of the nations is not the absence of resource. Our resources are great and our people are hungry to do to work, to achieve, to succeed, they have passion. I live in Europe, I've lived in Europe 29 years, and I would rather take an African young person than a European person who is very laid back and who is not interested in pursuing anything. And part of the ways to correct the leadership challenges, develop new leaders, pick on the new coming generation, create systems to help them build their mind. Number three, develop their capacity. If you look at those whom we call our leaders today, they are leaders because they are tribal leaders. They came in on the basis of tribe. Once they see that they are not likely to win an election, they will raise a group of thugs from their tribe to cause problem. It isn't because the nation can see incredible gifting. It's very sad that you can open newspapers in Africa and see quotable quotes from our leaders. When we want to quote great sayings, we have to say Martin Luther King said, oh, thank God we are finding some people in the church today, we can quote uh, Papa Ayo, Rishi Java, we can quote David Oedepo, we can quote, you know, because these men are deep thinkers. You can't see it among our politicians, and most of them are tribal leaders, tribal chiefs rather, and not leaders. They got to their position because their tribe chose them. And when they get there again, their perspective is limited by their tribe. They have no exposure. What is the solution? Capacity development. Human capacity development. In other words, for you to lead a nation like Nigeria, 150 million people, because you went to university is not enough. There should have been a process of human capacity development. And you see it in places like the USA. Sometimes they will take note of a young man who seemed to have a future and from university days and his political involvement, they begin to help him to grow more. Uh, Bill Clinton did not get to where he is by chance. He got a scholarship as a Rhodes Scholar to go to Oxford 
as he came out, he became more involved with the Democratic Party, met with uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, and you, from even his youth, he was one of those that were being groomed to lead in the future. There is no such thing. Rather, we see these same tribal chiefs replacing themselves with their children. And many of these children have no connection from primary school. They were shipped out to schools and cultures that are very different. They have no connection with the people. How they won the election is a mystery. So what is the solution? Africa needs to begin to develop its own people by human capacity development. And human capacity development must start with changing curriculums in our school. Instead of just running courses that make no difference, we need to begin to look at our systems. What can we do? How do we raise leaders? Even the church, too, needs to just stop Sunday morning service, midweek service. It needs to create institutions, leadership institutes, where people can go through a course on leadership. Because you see, many people think they are leaders. Some are managers, and they are not leaders. There is a... There is a dichotomy between a manager and the leader. The best and simplest way to define both is that managers are risk averse. They never like to take risk. Leaders are pathfinders. They go where no one wants to go.